the first thing listed in the instructions were to unplug all the cables from the machine. So here we've unplugged both encoders and the plug that hooks up to the wall. It also said to remove the machine from the carriage. So here you can see we've lifted up the main machine off of the carriage. In order to do that, I did have to remove the bottom bar and back. All I had to do was come around over here and pop it off just like this. Pull it off and then I pulled it out. This one's hooked up to the wheel all the way at the other end so this one's not coming off but I did need to remove this bottom pole in order to lift the machine up off the carriage and as you can see I just have the pole laying back here behind the long arm. Alright, the first part in the instructions where we're actually assembling is working with getting the motor plate onto the bottom of the carriage. For our particular machine, it is a little difficult. Um, it just takes a few minutes to get it figured out. First thing I did was I pulled the cord through the carriage and we're going to lift this up and move it over here on top. If you'll notice on the carriage, we have this nice little angle here, this dip. We're going to slide the machine onto that, push the carriage plate forward so that we can lift it up again from the bottom, slide back, and now you see it's on the carriage. Now that we have the motor plate on the carriage, we're going to actually attach the motor plate loosely to the carriage. Now the instructions had things lined up and facing a different direction as far as the deck clamp and the motor plate spacer go, but after um, trial and error we realized that the way it is in the book wasn't clearly wasn't made for this particular carriage. It doesn't fit that way. So, you take the deck clamp and the motor plate spacer and you're going to make sure that these holes are lined up and they're actually going to go in this way where you have this big space to the inside of the motor plate. So we'll line that up, put this through here, make sure it goes through both holes and then you push up, you see how I'm pushing up? just to make sure that we can reach under and you can feel the nut under there with your hand. So I'm gonna do that with this hand. See. So that we can get this nut under here. You might wanna lift the machine up depending on what you can see, what you're capable of doing. And just lift it up here. And again, you just want it on loosely. They don't want you to tighten it yet because you're going to have to make adjustments. So, boom, first one. Again, loose. So, the spacer for the motor plate, the deck clamp. Slide these under here. And this little groove right here actually slides into, there's a groove in here on the motor plate. Take the bolt. It through all the holes. And again, I'm going to lift up, look under here, and just get that nut on there just enough. Again, if we look, I can still slide this so I can make adjustments to it as needed. Once we start putting the belts on, we have to make sure everything lines up just right. So, spacer, deck clamp. Slide it in, hex through, okay, I'm gonna get that through there, spin, spin. 
spin, spin. There we go. Three down. Last one. Slide. Oops, look at me. Doing it the wrong way. See? Make sure you have the holes lined up. It's not going to do you any good if they're not. You're just going to get frustrated like I do when I mix up and don't know why. All right. Last one. All right. There we go. We just made it through the first step in the book of getting our quilt motion motor plate installed. We've got the cord to the back. Motor plate can move back and forth so we can adjust it as needed. And we've got all our clamps facing the right direction. It only took me about four tries to get this figured out off camera, so uh, hopefully you'll be able to get it on your first try. The next step is to install this power strip to the back of the carriage. This strip comes with two spots already open and you see there are two holes on our carriage so that's pretty easy to do. You start with the two smallest hex bolts and two nuts. So we'll just set these here. I'll line this up and again you want these facing up with the power strip on off on the left and just slide that there stick the bolt in I'll stick the second one in All right, I'm gonna slide the nut on this might be the easiest step of the whole thing now for this step we actually if you see I'm just putting the nut on we actually do get to tighten it it suggests using a 10 millimeter open wrench um, unfortunately I don't have one of those I'll work with what I got I've got two pliers so let's get this tightened up helps if I turn it the right way doesn't it righty tidy lefty loosey eh Probably would have been easier if I had a wrench, but there are just some days you don't want to run to Lowe's. All right, once we get this tightened up, guess what? That's it. Now we're not going to plug anything in yet. We do that at the very end, so, well, at least not this one. You can take, if you want, you can go ahead and plug this strip in. Alright, on to the next step. For this step, we're going to need one belt clamp, which is this set right here. Two of the longest bolts that came in our pack. Two nuts. And we're going to need the long belt, the biggest of the two. So for the first step, we're going to actually take the belt and we're gonna take the teeth the groove side it's gonna go down and for our machine unlike in the booklet we're gonna feed it through this hole in the booklet it has it on top of the machine that won't work with these bolts with the belt clip see the belt clip in the book actually bolts in like this and it goes across the top but the holes don't line up there's no way to do that for our frame it goes through the hole the groove side go into the grooves of the belt clip I'm trying to get the lighting so you can see there you go you're gonna leave about two inches of belt out for this piece you have two circles on one side and you have two hexagons on the other put the circle side snugly into the belt clip now here it's nice and sandwiched in when you pull it doesn't go anywhere pull that through and if you'll notice these grooves fit right into the hole so now we're gonna take the extra long bolts line it up and we're gonna push it all the way through so that we find the hole take one of these lovely nuts 
go ahead and twist that on and get it tight. Take the other side, do the same thing. Got to locate the holes. Woo. There we go. Make sure that goes in. Tighten that one up. Now in it, it says again to use your 10 millimeter wrench if you have one. I have two sets of pliers, so I'll be using my pliers to tighten that. But here you have your tail coming out. You have the belt with the teeth side down. Your teeth side down. And that, nice and snug, not going anywhere. For step four, we're going to be installing the belt tensioner. So if you are like me and you used your machine for free motion previously, there's a chance that you have a stopper installed. Now we're on the right side of the machine when you're facing it. So we'll go ahead and we'll loosen this up and we'll take off the stopper. And I'm just gonna put this to the side. Never know when you're gonna want or need that back. So now we start with our belt tensioner. Has the knobs on either side. It has these two same little prongs like the belt clamp did and it has the spaces for our long bolts. So we're working with the two longest bolts. We're going to go ahead and slide those each in. It's going to be easier to get those in first and now they just go right in here. This is always the fun part. Yeah. Finagle the holes through. Ooh, why has it got to be so hard? There we go. Alright, so now this sits right here in this space. Again, this is the hole that the belt's going to come through, and it's going to slide through there. So now that that's tight in there, we're going to take a bolt nut and go ahead and get that bolt nut on there. And you can take your 10 millimeter wrench or pliers and get that tightened up. For the next step, we're going to be installing the long belt into the motor plate. You're going to take the belt and you want to make sure that the grooves stay down and that there are no kinks or twists in the belt. So I'm just going to go through and pull to make sure that we do not end up with any twist. If you end up with twist, you have to start all over. So here's the end. We're going to lift the carriage up onto its side. And if you'll notice here, we have two gray spin, spinning rotor spinners. I don't know what you call them. They're round and they spin. And you're going to take this rope with the cogs, the nice little grooves down, and you're going to slide it in. And you should feel it go through. You can take about six inches, pull it down. And if you'll see, it's come out of the top. Now we're going to feed it back through. And we want it to feed in where the grooves are. There are grooves that you can feel. We want it to feed in where the grooves come through. And let's see if it's coming out correctly on this end. I'm pushing and pushing and pushing and not feeling it go through. Okay. And again, make sure that you don't get it twisted. You know what I think it's doing? I think it's just trying to spin in a circle. And this thing has been rolled up so long in the box. Ooh, so we're going to try and bend it, get it straight. All right, put it back in there. Let's see if we can get it to... There we go. Look at this. Oh, we did it. So when we pull it, you should see and feel it moving without any clicking. If it's clicking, then it's not been installed correctly. So we're gonna go ahead and pull, pull, pull. And let this go all the way through. Get that off and twist it there. There we go. And now we're going to take the carriage plate and put it back on. We're 
we're going to pull this tight and looking at my machine I can see that the grooves are all down right. I'm going to move this carriage up a bit. So there we go. I can feel it sliding through. So that's been installed correctly. Next we're going to move down to the tensioner plate to put the belt through there. All right, so now we're down here at the tensioner plate. I've got the belt pulled all the way down here. I've made sure that the grooves are all still facing down so that we don't have any twists. We're gonna go ahead and slide this belt through. And this is the fun part. We gotta get it through here, through this hole. Uh, I did twist mine upside down only because this part is curled, which makes it hard to get straight through and up. There we go. All right, here we go. So again, double checking, make sure that everything's still laying flat. Okay, so we've got to loosen this. So mine's loose and we're going to take, Ooh, I gotta keep it straight. This here, and we're gonna feed it through Feed it through. There we go. I'm going to start spinning this. All right. There we go. You can kind of pull it and it spins. Okay. Here we go. All right. So it's nice. Pull through. I can slide this in. Tighten it up. And now our belt, our slack is hanging down. Our belt is on and it is facing teeth down. There are no kinks. So Quilt motion will be able to move our machine properly across those grooves. For this next step, we're going to go ahead and get the front belt set up. So we're going to need the small belt, the second belt clamp, the second belt tensioner, four of the smaller bolts for nuts and this nice long pole that came with your machine. So we're going to start with the side labeled front. We're going to flip it this way so that we have the groove up and the bottom pole is going to be down. We're going to take our belt clamp, just like we did with the last one. We have these grooves, and we're going to place the belt where the grooves of the belt fit into the grooves on the clamp. Give it a good inch or two. This piece that goes back with the circles, and you remember the other side has hexagons on it, we're going to take the circle side and put the circles right in so that it's clamped together and nice and sandwiched. We're going to put it here on top of this piece. The little grooves fit nicely. So from here, we'll take a bolt. We're going to find the hole, push it through, one nut. I go back there and twist that on. Okay, same thing on the other side. Find the hole, push through. There we go. Get that on. And here, if you have your 10 millimeter wrench, you can go ahead and completely tighten that if you want. I use pliers. Work with what you got. There we go. All right, so that's on. Now we're gonna scroll on down. Whoops, sorry, knocked over my water bottle. Down to the other end. It says back. I know it says it's upside down. So we're gonna go ahead and take right here our tensioner 
belt tensioner. I'm going to loosen that up. And when we install this, we want to make sure that we have it installed with this groove on the top of this line here. That's because the belt comes all the way across and once this is installed the belt is going to go through there. So here we just line it up, take our bolt, slide it through, make sure the bolt goes through that. Take a nut, hand tighten, next side. And if I ever look clumsy, let's be honest, I'm trying to do this while watching myself in a camera and watch what I'm doing because you know if I mess this up, I'm not just making a bad video but I'm making a, a machine that I can't even run then. So I got to get it right for all of us. All right, go ahead and take, and let's tighten these with my handy dandy pliers. Oh, I can loosen, tighten that a little bit more. And once this is tightened, we will have this step all done. Okay, so here we are installing the final belt. Um, if you notice in your instructions, they tell you that this piece goes to the back with the belt clamp and the belt tensioner goes to the front. However, the frame I have with my Juki, that is not the case. Uh, we completely installed it, had a heck of a time, got the machine back on, and um, that's not how it goes. So for our particular setup, belt clamp to the front. Okay, so we have the belt prongs up. I made sure there were no kinks. And I went ahead and threaded this. I loosened the belt on the bottom um, only because I needed to lift the carriage and threaded this through. It took me a good 10 minutes. Um, when your belt is curved like this, it's going to be harder to get it to go through with the gray belt. So, I just roll it like this. And I just keep doing this until it's straighter than it was so it went through easy. So now that we have this on, and you can hear there no no clicking sound, so it is installed correctly. We're going to set this off to the side and we're going to go ahead and get the machine put back on the carriage for the next part. All right, now that I have the carriage on um, with the machine on it, we take this pole, we lift it up, and we line these holes up. And if you'll notice again, we have the belt tensioner in the back. All right, so now we're gonna take two of these small with the Allen wrench needed kind. I don't know what they're called. I'm a chick. I don't know that kind of stuff. All right. I'm going to find the right hole, get that spun in, and tighten this up. This is an easy part. And honestly, most of this has been fairly easy to do. I've been quite happy with the process. It, it hasn't taken too much. The, the only thing I will say is there's a lot of trial and error because this I don't believe was made for our particular, um, for my particular frame. So that has proven to be difficult, but it hasn't been, oh no, so difficult that I couldn't do it. Let me get my bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and get this tightened and on, and then we'll be back again. Alright, now we're on the very last bit. We have our belt, and just like we did with the side, we're going to slide it through here in the belt tensioner. and. 
see how it comes out right here it's hard to see because it's so dark but it's coming out so we're gonna go ahead and tighten this up well it helps if I have it the right way there we go all right so now when I move the machine I can feel the tension in the rope as it's moving For this next step, we're going to go ahead and get our tablet holder installed. So right here we have the three bolts that hold on the handlebars. So we're going to go ahead and get these loosened and we're going to put them somewhere safe. And we'll get these off because what we're going to do once we get these off is we're going to get the tablet bracket installed right on top of this. Now, while I'm doing this, I'll go ahead and tell you that um, your tablet may not fit perfectly into your tablet holder at first. Um, you can go on, oops, saw that. You can go into the back of the screen holder part and there's actually a couple allen wrench bolts back there that you can adjust and i can show that in just a minute it takes a two and a half millimeter allen wrench which is surprise not included with the machine so you'll have to do that part yourself. You gotta find the hole. All right, so I'm not gonna get that fully tightened. I'm just putting that there to help guide me while I get the rest of these in. Ooh, it's a little harder than you'd think. Here we go. All right, so once I get all three of these on, I can go ahead um, now and get these tightened. Now remember, this is holding on your tablet, um, which if you're doing this and you went all out to buy this, chances are you bought a nice expensive tablet that's uh, gonna work really great with it. So we do not want our nice expensive tablets falling on the ground. Um, unless, of course, you have a good protection plan that you don't mind using. Okay, so like I was saying about the back, we have these spots here. It takes a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench. So I adjusted mine both sides to fit. So then we can just slide this here. And we have this nice piece right here. Super easy peasy. I say that as I have issue. Spin, 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 spin. All right. Nice and tight, and our tablet will fit right on top. All right, so the next thing we're doing is installing the cables for the tablet. So the first thing it said was to go ahead and hook up our encoders, but we've already done that before. So I didn't want to film that. We already know how to do that. This is the power cord. It says to take our 44 inch network cable. It's this one right here. And we're going to hook this up. Now this little hole right here for my machine, I had this little rubber piece here and it was, I guess, protecting it from dust. So I had to remove that. And then we can take this and that plugs right in. All right, so now, sorry, there we go, click. So now we can come around to this side and we're going to get the 44 inch cable connected to our motor plate down here. Ooh, sorry, it's kind of dark. So as you'll see, it's going to go right into this location right there. All 
Now that we have the network cable plugged in, we're going to take the USB cable and we're going to take the square end and we're going to plug that in right here. Click all the way in the end. These two pieces, they want you to wrap together. We have this lovely coil right here, which is how they want them wrapped together. So we have to wrap, 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 wrap. And then what you're going to do once we get this wrapped is we're actually going to secure these underneath the carriage of our machine. Sorry if you hear in the background that's a one of my three children running around trying to trying to be as as helpful as a you know 3 and 4 year olds can be. All right. So we have these handy dandy pieces right here with zip ties so that we can attach to the bottom of the carriage and zip tie these cables. this right here pushed on slide this through right okay there we go nice and on there to help keep things from getting all tangled up. Finally, after putting the last sticker here with the zip tie, I went ahead and brought the cord around, put another one here so that the machine could go all the way forward and all the way back without getting tangled up. Moving up, we have another one the cord right here the 44 inch one cable plugged in the other one the usb cord as you can see we follow this around all the way up and i have it plugged into the tablet and if we come around here i went ahead and i followed the directions from the usb to install everything onto the tablet so we are all hooked up. Belts are nice and tight. And our machine is ready to go. Thank you guys. I hope that this video was informative. If you have any questions, feel free to comment on the video and I will try to help you out as best I can. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like if you were able to find this helpful. Thanks.